one game does not a season make, but North Carolina just had a five minute stretch that could come to identify this entire basketball season. You are locked on Tar Heels, your daily podcast on the UNC Tar Heels, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, it's Monday, December 12th, 2022. Welcome into the Locked on Tar Heels podcast, the only daily North Carolina show out there. I'm your host, Isaac Shade, and I want to thank you for making us your first listen or watch of the day to make sure that you get your Tar Heels every day. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free right now at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Again, that's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Turns and conditions apply. Oh man, great show coming up today. We're going to recap Carolina's win over Georgia Tech, including our four corners uh, recap of the game, the shady stat of the game. Uh, going to talk about Carolina women's basketball had a massive win on Sunday against Wofford and the Tar Heel legend is going out on top. But first, the biggest takeaway from this Georgia Tech, the win over Georgia Tech on Saturday is this. North Carolina just played their most complete game of the season. From tip to final buzzer, they competed. They had um, consistent effort, no big lulls. They were the more physical of the two teams. And I left that game supremely encouraged. Was it a perfect performance? By no means. But those were the North Carolina Tar Heels that you saw playing on Saturday. And, you know, so much of what we've talked about makes sense, right? They've been able to be home. They've actually been able to practice. Coach Davis had um, quotes to that effect after the game. And so, again, steps in the right direction, right? It's not the big leap all at once because that's not what you expect. You just want to see progression towards what North Carolina needs to be. The biggest sign to me, the single biggest statistical sign that North Carolina was themselves is this sharing the basketball. It's something they talked about all week at practice and it came to fruition. 15 assists on 27 made field goals. That translates into a 55.6% assist ratio, which is the highest single game percentage this season. Not to mention it's coming off of back 20 back to back 25% assist percentage games. So, this is what Hubert Davis needs from his team. All of that was highlighted by a five-minute stretch of basketball, the final five minutes of the first half, that I think could help shed some light on what North Carolina could be the rest of the season. And I want to highlight one play in particular that I thought um, was the best example, was the quintessential version of Carolina hunting for the best shot available. At this point, it's 34-26. Carolina's up 8 one fifteen left before halftime. I want to talk through the entire possession because I just want to show you every place Carolina had a good shot and passed it up in search of the best shot. I would encourage you to go back and even watch it as, as I'm talking through it, maybe uh, after, after you listen to the show, watch the show, whatever it may be. So at this point, Seth Trimble is running the point. Caleb Love's on the bench. More on that later. Um, he dribbles to the right wing, aided by an Armando Baycott screen and kind of an R.J. Davis shoulder shrug against another Georgia Tech defender. Baycott rolls on into the post. Trimble goes right wing. Davis uh, replaces out on the top of the key. Trimble kicks back up top to R.J. Davis, who has a good look at a three could get it but he sees that our no one is around Baycott underneath so he passes up this good shot to get the ball to Baycott it's a second too late and a couple Georgia Tech defenders corral Armando Baycott so what does he do he he could have gotten up a shot at the rim he's right there and you know it might have gone in but he sees this convergence so he kicks out to Pete Nance in the corner Pete Nance immediately swings it um, back to R.J. Davis, who's um, moved position over to the left wing. At this point, just trying to move the ball really well. R.J. Davis has yet another good look at a three. A Georgia Tech co defender comes flying at him. What does he do? R.J. pump fakes, takes that one dribble step in, 
pull up that we've seen him make a million times. He made it, I think, had that play two other times in this game. You know that RJ is money from that um, one dribble pull up as people try to run him off the three point line. So doesn't take the shot from three pump fakes, one dribble pull up. And you think, man, going in Carolina is about to have a double digit lead, but no. So RJ's defender has come flying past him, taking himself out of the play. Once RJ steps inside the arc, Pete Nance is still in that left corner. His defender comes over to try to contest. So RJ, seeing that, kicks it to Pete Nance. So Carolina has given up at least four good shots. RJ Davis's initial three, Armando's shot right around the basket, RJ's other three on the wing, RJ's step in long two to get it to Pete Nance back in the corner for a wide open three. Hits it. Carolina now has an 11 point lead. The biggest point here, North Carolina gave up all these good looks in favor of the great or best look of the possession. That is North Carolina basketball and has to be so game in and game out. The great part of this is all of that was part of an 11-0 run to end the first half or a 16-2 extended run over the final five minutes of the half to lead by 13. Before that, Georgia Tech had a 24-23 lead um, right around that five-minute mark. Seth Trimble checks in. The Tar Heels go on this 16-2 run and lead at the half again by uh, 13 points. And further proof of North Carolina having that complete game, it wasn't just this run. They led the entire second half by double digits. North Carolina played North Carolina basketball and has a chance to build on that Tuesday against the Citadel uh, as they continue to work on things ahead of ACC play fully starting. Carolina now one and one in ACC play has 18 more of those to go this season. Wow. Well, I also want to remind you really quick before we carry on in the show, a new thing that we're going to do each week is the heel of the week and the heel of the week. Every Friday, we're going to do the heel of the week where we celebrate a Tar Heel standout from the week that has been. And then just want to identify a heel of the week, like in the negative sense of heel, like what a heel. And that, I don't want that to be a Tar Heel. That could be anybody in anything in life. It could be sports or other, just something ridiculous that you've seen this week. I would love for you to share that with me. And then uh, if, if I use yours on the show, I'll shout you out. Um, so send in some submissions for the heel of the week and the heel of the week. You can DM the show on Twitter. You can email the show LockedOnTarHeels at gmail.com. Can't wait to see what we go with for that. Well, coming up in just a second, we're going to give some more specificity to our recap of this game. I always do a four corners recap to honor Dean Smith. We'll do that. And of course, the shady stat of the game. All of that is coming up in just a second. But first, this episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. And that's why you got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. So easy to create a job post, so why not give it a try? You just add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your profile to let people know that you're hiring. And then you can use simple tools like screening questions to make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skill set and experience to let you know who you'd like to interview and ultimately hire. You want to finish the year strong and the right new hire can help you do just that. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Again, that's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Turns and conditions apply. All right, friends, four corners recap, and here it comes. Basically, just four things that I thought were uh, important in this game for good or bad that I believe helped influence the outcome of it and often points to things for the season long. So number one in the four corners takeaway is this. Getting Armando Baycott back, that cannot be overlooked or understated how important it is as seen by Justin Mutz's performance as Carolina played Virginia Tech last Sunday. The Tar Heels, if they had had Armando Baycott in the lineup, 
it's a different ball game. I'm not saying they necessarily win, but Justin Mutz doesn't go crazy at the least. Uh, Armando is still recovering from the shoulder injury suffered at Indiana a couple weeks ago. And that, that was evident in this game. Um, he had some big plays right out of the gate. Carolina won the tip. Um, didn't score on that offensive possession, but he had an offensive rebound, came back down the other side of the court and had a block on Georgia Tech. So great start to the game, but you could see Armando kind of checking out his soldier his shoulder, feeling his way about it. So um, it, it's going to be a while before he's 100% and after missing a game, uh, trying to work back into game shape just a little bit, but we'll get there. However, you love his performance in this game, 21 points. 13 rebounds, and honestly, the most important stat for me, zero turnovers for Armando Baycott, who, quite frankly, this season has been plagued with turnovers so far. And so the fact that he was able to go turnoverless is massive. In fact, uh, you combine that with the Indiana game, those are the only two games this season where he has had fewer than two turnovers in the first games of the season, everything leading up to Indiana, he had at least two turnovers in every one of them, but against Indiana, just one and then zero against uh, Georgia tech. Hopefully that is a recipe for Armando Baycott going forward. A couple of record updates from him and what he did. He's now up to third on the all-time Carolina rebound list. And that was his 54th career dub dub, what we call double doubles on this show. Not to mention, it was his 61st double-digit rebounding game of his career, which ties Billy Cunningham for the most in Carolina history. Speaking of coming back, this is still within the first of the four corners, but Jalen Washington, great to get this young man back. His first game action in over a year, missed his entire senior season, was able to check in with 222 left in the game. And one of Carolina's last possessions of the game, they had a clear out for him and uh, had a nice little touch in the lane on a turnaround, Jay. Uh, shades of things to come. I shouldn't use shade. That's my last name. Signs of things to come. Um, not to mention uh, a very helpful front court presence um, to help spell both Armando Baycott and Pete Nance and not have to always go small when one of them is out of the game. Keep your eyes on how Coach Hubert Davis uses him going forward. Number two on our Four Corners recap is this. I've been saying for a couple of weeks now with, with Caleb Love's kind of shaky start to the season, one of the only ways to get through to him is going to be playing time. And that's what you saw happen in the first half. Caleb Love only played 11 first half minutes. Seth Trimble played nine. Now, eventually Caleb played the entire second half, uh, all, uh, what would that be? All 20 of those, but um, we'll get to that in a second. But Caleb had three first half turnovers, Still struggling with the shot. Finished the game one for six from three. Um, but Coach uh, Coach Davis pulled Caleb Love with about five and a half minutes left in the first half, and he didn't come back in. It was Seth Trimble's show to run, basically, uh, with RJ playing off the ball there. And so you love to see that. Now, I love this in both ways. I love Coach Davis's willingness to sit Caleb down to – to say to him, hey, buddy, <laughs> come on, get your stuff together here. But I also love um, seeing what we saw from Seth Trimble in that stretch. We've already talked about some of the plays he made, like um, starting that possession that wound up with the Pete Nance three. The very next possession, Carolina gets a rebound. Trimble comes like just barreling up the right side of the key, threads a bounce pass to RJ Davis, who's running ahead, layup in transition. That is what North Carolina needs. Seth Trimble is a playmaker point guard first and foremost to go with that insane uh, individual man-to-man -man defense that he plays. So in addition to benching Caleb, this is about trust in Seth Trimble, who finished the game, three assists, zero turnovers. That's great. Now, again, to Caleb Love's credit, got the message, came back in, and played a much more solid second half. He finished as the assist leader for this team. He wants to be doing these things. Obviously, he's frustrated that he's not shooting well, uh, but it's about him making good team decisions with the basketball, even when he's not shooting well. And so those are the things we're watching for. Play or um, uh, Four corner point number three is 
the um, resurgence of troubling stats. And by that, I don't mean the coming back of troubling stats in a bad way. I mean, in a bad way, I mean, there's these four troubling stats I've been talking about and Carolina made strides in three of them. Number one, we've already talked about is the assists. 15 on 27 made field goals, 55.6% assist rate. But the other two I want to hit on, number one is rebounding. Carolina has been an up and down rebounding team this season, was out rebounded to start the season, and then has been out rebounded the last several games. Not what Coach Davis wants to see. Now, in the midst of that, they had two plus 16 rebounding games, and so you love that but not so since then. Whereas out-rebounded by Alabama, Indiana, and Virginia Tech. And by Virginia Tech, it was plus 14 for the Hokies. But the Tar Heels come out in this game, (laughs) out-rebound Georgia Tech 43 to 22. Georgia Tech only had one offensive rebound. Armando had seven by himself. Wow. Um, And in fact, both... Armando and RJ Davis had double doubles with points and rebounds. That's right. RJ Davis had 10 rebounds. And in fact, that was the funniest moment of the game. There was a point uh, with about two minutes left to go where RJ was in position for a rebound and he kind of got bumped out of the way. That would have been his 10th and he couldn't get it. So Armando did. And part of it was because Armando was running into him a little bit and they kind of both realized it after the play was over, like, ah, shoot, that would have been 10 rebounds for RJ Davis. And so they both kind of looked at each other like, ah, dang it. Uh, But thankfully, RJ in the final minute or so got that 10th rebound for his double double funny moment there. So rebounding, uh, much, much better. Obviously, you got to keep it going. As I said, uh, for the cold open, one game does not a season make, but this is an encouraging sign, winning the rebounding battle by almost doubling up your opponent. Carolina was plus 21. Georgia Tech had 22 total. Wow. The other thing that Carolina did much better is points in the paint. They had allowed 40 or more in each of the last three games. Georgia Tech only had 22 points in the paint, and North Carolina won the points in the paint battle 36 to 22. So great to see the Tar Heels getting inside, made a concerted effort to get the ball to Armando in a position to score a lot. In fact, they made uh, a, a change in how they were rim running and rim running in transition. That's a hard phrase to say. Rim running in transition. There you go. And uh, wound up getting a lot of looks at the rim for Armando. And he will hopefully finish more consistently as his shoulder gets back more healthy. Now, that's three of the four problem areas that moved in a, in a good direction. Unfortunately, one of them is still in a bad way. And that is our fourth thing I want to point out in the four corners recap. Three-point shooting is still not there. The Tar Heels were only three for 13 in this game, one made each by Pete Nance, Caleb Love, and RJ Davis. Now the Tar Heels are shooting 28.8% as a team. Not going to do it. Um, I've done the research previously. I don't have it in front of me right now on national champions And there's like a threshold where literally no national champions have been below like 35.35% as a team. So Carolina is going to have to do better. A big part of that is Caleb Love, one for six on Saturday. And he himself is now shooting just 25.4% from three this season. Caleb's got to get better from there. RJ Davis had a a, a change in how he's having the the, uh, medical staff tape him up. Um, at the suggestion of Coach Lebo, and that seemed to free him up to shoot better. To wit, he led all scorers with 22 points on, I believe it was 8 of 13 shooting from the field. And so that's good news. So bottom line with three-point shooting, if Carolina wants to get to their ceiling, it's just got to get better. There's no way around it. Again, going back to Jalen Washington, he should help in that endeavor. Got to finish this segment with our shady stat of the game. Listen, mine are in a car somewhere, so I'm borrowing my daughter's little uh, rainbow heart sunglasses. I don't know what's going on here. She's three, folks. Come on. Give me a break. (laughs) Shady stat of the game. I mentioned RJ Davis had double-digit rebounds on Saturday. Unbelievable. Keep in mind, this dude is six foot nothing. Shortest guy on the court for North Carolina. Has now had double-digit rebounds twice this season. And don't forget that he also had double-digit rebounds in the national championship game. What does that up to? RJ Davis at six foot flat has double digit rebounds in three of Carolina's last 11 games. My dude 
is doing work. RJ Davis, keep it up, buddy. Love to see that. Well, the Tar Heel men's basketball team is not the only one doing great. The women are awesome and killing it as well. And a Tar Heel legend has retired on top. Who is that? We'll talk about it in just a second. But first, this episode is brought to you by Simply Safe. Here at Locked on Tar Heels, we believe home should be where you and your family feel safest, especially this holiday season. So give yourself and your family the gift of peace and protection with the number one rated home security system, Simply Safe. And right now, they're offering Locked on Tar Heel listeners 40% off a new security system. That's ridiculous. So don't put this off. Here's why I love it, quite frankly. In this day and age where I control everything in my house with Alexa or with my phone, I love that I can do the same with Simply Safe. I can see all the feeds in crystal clear HD right there on my phone. I love that they have this level of interactive capability. With that top rated Simply Safe, Simply Safe app, you stay in complete control of your security system. You can arm it, disarm it, unlock it for a guest, access your cameras, adjust system settings anytime, anywhere. So don't miss your chance to save big on my favorite security system. And as a reminder, get 40% off any new system at simplysafe.com slash locked on college. Again, that's simplysafe.com slash locked on college because there's no safe like Simply Safe. All right, North Carolina ladies basketball. These women are doing it this season. Their only loss is at Indiana the night after North Carolina men's team lost at Indiana. The Hoosiers were ranked fifth in that endeavor, but North Carolina um, has several other uh, ranked wins of their own and defeated Wofford yesterday on Sunday, 99-67, to the highest scoring game of this year for the Tar Heels. Honestly, the biggest news and the best takeaway is that Deja Kelly didn't have a great game. What do you mean, Isaac? You just said it's the best news, and you said that Carolina's like de facto leader and captain didn't have a good game. That's right. But did you hear how many points I said Carolina scored? 99. So what I mean is this. On a day where Deja Kelly shoots 4 of 15 and 0 for 5 from 3 and had just 9 points, multiple other Tar Heels stepped up as they've been doing all season long. Kennedy Todd Williams, Eva Hutchin, both scored 20 points in this game. They were a combined 12 of 19 from the field, a combined 9 of 14 from three, and hit all seven of their combined free throws. Great showing by those ladies. What about Alyssa Utsby? 17 points, 12 rebounds, She's just doing it, man. Nine of those 12 rebounds were on the offensive glass. Nine offensive rebounds for Alyssa Utsby. Wofford, as a team, had seven. That's right. Alyssa out-rebounded on the offensive glass. Wofford as a team. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Also, the Tar Heels had 27 bench points in this game, so you love to see these contributions coming from all over the place, not just the starters Coach Banghart has it going. Can't wait to see what is up ahead. Speaking of which, the Tar Heels have two more non-conference games before they get into ACC play. Uh, South Carolina Upstate on Friday. That's going to be another blow. That will be the highest scoring game of the season, most likely for the Tar Heels. Just telling you to prep for that. But then after that, a week from Tuesday, Carolina plays currently 14th ranked Michigan in the Jumpman Invitational, just like the guys team is going to do. Uh, so another ranked opportunity there for North Carolina women's team. But then after that, nine days off before the Tar Heels start ACC play on December 29th, hosting Florida State there in Carmichael. By the way, it's going to be really easy to keep track of the ladies' ACC schedule. Why? They literally play nine weeks of games, Thursday, Sunday, Thursday, Sunday, Thursday, Sunday. So if you're ever wondering, are the women playing today? Is it a Thursday? Is it a Sunday? Then the answer is yes. Uh, pretty easy to keep tabs on that. Keep it rolling, Coach Banghart and Team, speaking of women's teams, you are well aware that Carolina field hockey won another national championship uh, just a, a week or so ago. Well, 
Karen Shelton, longtime 42-year head coach, uh, retired earlier last week and was honored at the men's basketball game on Saturday to a standing ovation much deserved by her. Listen to just, let me just spout off some numbers at you. 10 NCAA championships, 25 ACC championships, winningest head coach in NCAA field hockey history. UNC is blessed with so many, not just high level or good coaches, but literally the goats in their sport. You know, you think about somebody like Anson Dorrance, you think about Dean Smith, who before he was overtaken by some, uh, some since him was the winningest coach in NCAA basketball. I mean, it's just, it's a ridiculous embarrassment of riches for the North Carolina coaching realms. And so you love to see it. Uh, North Carolina under Karen Shelton has won four of the last five national championships. They've been in six of the last eight national championship games and been in 11 of the last 16 national championship games. Additionally, they've been in the past 14 years, they've made 13 final fours. 13 final fours in 14 years. That is bonkers, I tell you, friends. Way to go. Karen Shelton, congrats on a great career. Congrats on your retirement. May it be a great time. Go hang out with Roy Williams or something. <laughs> you love to see that. Well, what a great way to kick off the week by being able to talk about these victories, about Coach Karen Shelton retiring. Just a reminder that it is always a great day to be a Tar Heel, right? You know it. Uh, man, coming up on tomorrow's show, we're going to have our preview for you for Carolina's matchup with Citadel on Tuesday night. And of course, Tuesday night, make sure to stay tuned for our post cast coming up after the game, as well as Coach Pat Kilby and I will have the recap for you on Wednesday's show. You can follow the show on Twitter at Locked on Heels. You can follow me on Twitter at Isaac Shade. And again, you can email the show LockedOnTarHeels at gmail.com. Would love to have your heel of the week and heel of the week submissions. That's great. For your next listen of the day, let me encourage you to check out Locked on Sports Today podcast. Biggest stories of the day, instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. Locked on Sports Today, available on Odyssey, YouTube, and anywhere else you get podcasts. If you would, if you haven't already, would you subscribe to the show, smash the like button, and leave some comments on your thoughts on these basketball games. As I already said, it's a great day to be a Tar Heel. Can't wait to be back with you tomorrow, but until then, peace. <laughs>